I'm pretty excited about sharing this video with you. Why? Because I was blessed with the opportunity to spend some time chatting with the amazing Barbara O'Neill. Have you heard of Barbara? Well, Barbara is an Australian natural health educator whom, like many other natural wellness experts, got banned in 2019 and 2020. Why did she get banned? Well, stay tuned to find out. Also, keep watching to the end of this video because Barbara gave me a number of items that can help you with your health that I'm going to be giving away. Stay tuned. Barbara O'Neill has videos all over social media, like this. I've got some very good news. When you stop the things that are causing the problems, very quickly the body starts to respond. It's pretty sad that Barbara has been banned from speaking in her own country. But here in the U.S., she is a very sought-after speaker. And recently, my wife found out that she was scheduled to speak not too far from where we live. And she asked me if we could attend the event. And I'm like, yeah, of course we can. So we got our tickets and went to the event. The event was held at Denton Farm Park in North Carolina. It is a family owned park that is basically set up as an old town. It has a number of restored buildings like a general store, blacksmith shop, gas station, museum, church, and more. You know, I can't believe this. This church right here looks like the little house on the Prairie Church. Check it out inside. Barbara's event was a three-day event. And on one of the days, we even brought the kids. And our boys met up with some other boys. And let's just say they did some boy stuff. So you what? Have to. No, no. no, no. You first, Ruben, you can erase her. You don't have to. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna go basically. Watch, go. Oh man, that looks speeding off. <laughs> Bloody annoying. Okay. Yeah, seriously, babe. Look. Look at this. I got one over here. I wanna get that tape. Oh yeah, you yeah, can. Come on, what are you looking at? Three, two, one, go. Oh, you can't make that It was pretty neat to see the large crowd that Barbara drew in. The main pavilion area couldn't even hold everybody. And they even had to set up an overflow tent with the screen so that way others could see Barbara's presentation. I knew going into this event that Barbara's views on health align with ours. But I look forward to learning even more from her. Some of the things that she talked about I knew already. But she also gave me a number of things to think about. She talked about hawthorn berry for heart disease. She also talked about the dangers of seed oils, fitness, the benefits of getting sunlight, fresh air, and even how to breathe better. When the mouth of love gas sits down, our nose breathes is in and out through the nose is carbon dioxide. You can have too much carbon dioxide or you can have not enough carbon dioxide. And this is a subject I actually have been thinking a lot about lately. Years ago, I was able to ditch the sleep apnea machine because of things I changed in my health. But also, thinking about the importance of breathing through our nose and what all our nose does to improve our health. On each of the three days, Barbara gave two talks with a break in between and the evening ended up wrapping up around 8 p.m. And before we left on our last evening there, I got some organic, gluten-free, ancient grain sourdough bread from Simple Needs. And one piece of this bread will fill you up like eating two to three pieces of normal bread. And besides, you're also getting a lot more nutrients with this bread as well. And I also got some of Barbara's books. And while I was at her table, I got to meet some of her team members. And actually, one of them recognized me from YouTube. And I got to thinking, I wonder if she would ask Barbara if she would be willing to do a chat with me for my YouTube audience. And to my surprise, she said yes. <laughs> 
So before Barbara headed back to Australia, she took time out of her schedule to chat with me. So Barbara, Miss O'Neill, how in the world did a 70 year old grandma <laughs> like you get banned for trying to teach people about health? Yeah, people ask my husband that all the time and he says, oh, she's uh, just getting people to drink more water and uh, go to bed a bit earlier. <laughs> and, but really, if you go a little bit deeper, my husband's got a political party called Heart health, environment, accountability, rights and transparency. And a journalist said to him when he began in 2016, are you prepared to lose your money, your name, your property, your business? Michael said, yeah, you know, I'm not 30, but he wasn't prepared for them to take me down. Uh. So that, you know, they just put out there, anyone, you know, can we get someone to make up a complaint against this woman? That's what they actually said on their oh, Facebook wow. page. And so four people came forward and, and went through everything I've ever said and came up with uh, goat's milk. <laughs> they say, you know, I'm, I suggest if a woman can't breastfeed to give goat's milk. And they claim that that can be lethal. Oh, wow. So my husband said to them, well, where's the evidence that it's lethal? And they said, well, while there are no fatalities, it's a potential risk. So th this, this is how ludicrous it is. In fact, even when I'd finished the tribunal, called it the Inquisition, where they questioned me for two hours, I was not there, I'd gone to the bathroom, but Marcus said to our lawyer, um, how'd that go? And the lawyer said, I can't believe it, they've got nothing on her. And they go through everything you've ever said. Wow. She said, they've got nothing on her. Now, she sits through these all the time. And Marcus said, oh, does that mean she'll get off? And the lawyer said, no, no, she'll get a life ban, but she won't go to jail. Because if she was guilty, she'd go to jail. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows that it, it was bogus. <laughs> it just, oh, yeah, wow. it was. It was. And Michael was so frustrated, you know, that if we started a court case, it starts at 500 thou, and then six months later, another 500 wow. thou. We haven't got that sort of money to throw away. Wow. So Michael wrote a book. It's called The Assassination of Barbara O'Neill, which actually gives the story. There we go. <laughs> and I have that book and look forward to checking it out. I first heard about you through my wife. And I, I tend to be a guy that's more open-minded to health things, more than most guys, I think. Um, and going to your event, I noticed that it was probably like 90% women, 10% a tithe of guys. Oh, maybe 80-20. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> but do you find that it's women who are primarily interested first in more natural health? And, and do you think that maybe that's part of the design that, that God has given you all? Maybe, maybe. I think that men sort of think, my wife's looking after me. Yeah. <laughs> But you know that what I find interesting, I've had several women say, my husband told me to watch you. Oh, really? And my, my husband, he says to me, I'm not interested in health. <laughs> but he said, you make sense. Mm. And he said, when I first heard you 30 years ago, he thought, this lady makes sense. And he says to me that he believes that why... That's why there are men who are interested, because it makes sense. Yes. But even at our health retreat, we average 80 women, 20 men. Okay. So that, you know, we've never had an all-man program. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but about once a year we get an all-women program. And I think it's because the mother of the nurtures, mm. they're the homebodies, and the feminists might not like to hear me say that, but I'm just telling you how yeah. it is. <laughs> that I think you're right. It seems to be more women that are interested. Even with me, I'm, I've been interested in health and fitness for some time, but even things when it goes to like our, our children's health, my wife is the first one to present me with those type of things. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll do that. Yep, yeah. that makes sense too. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, there were so many things that you said in each of your talks that uh, just uh, really resonated with me. One of the things that I really liked was you talked about Psalm 146 when it says, don't put your trust in princes or in the son of man. Uh, can you elaborate a, a little bit more for those who didn't get to hear that? Well, do you know what I find very interesting is that I speak to all manner of people. 
fact, I've just come from Saudi Arabia, from Dubai, where it's all Muslim, um, Ireland, you know, all manner of audience, and they all love that verse. <laughs> and I was so excited when I found it because I thought, this is God saying to us, don't put your trust in princes, neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no health. In no help, and the next verse says his breath goes forth, he returns unto his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. In other words, this is a perishable man. Mm -hmm. So who are the princes? The princes are the authorities in the field. And I yeah. think 2020 showed us, mm -hmm. showed many people, you can't put your trust in the media, you can't yeah. put your trust a lot in the government. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to take it a little bit further, even the doctor, the nutritionist, and I'm not saying don't go to them. Mm -hmm. It says don't put your trust. Exactly. In fact, when they say this to you, you say thank you very much for your advice. I'll seriously consider this because and what everyone loves is when I say, I am the master of my destiny. Yeah. I, I am the one that chooses. These people aren't infallible. So I just got a message last couple of days. This lady said, the doctor said that my my um, pancreas has atrophied. And I went back and I said, do you know, sometimes they get it wrong. And the fact that you're eating and you're doing this, oh, I don't think it's atrophied at all. So my point is, question them. Question them. Question them. Don't take as absolute gospel what they say. Because sometimes they get it wrong. Exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. And, and related to that, how do you encourage people to navigate through that when when they're going through that and trying to figure out what is an ultimate, I guess, the ultimate authority of, of their lives and who to follow more and how to get through that? Well, what I suggest and do teach is that we should be the doctor mm -hmm. because no one knows how we feel. Mm -hmm. No one knows how different things um, react on us, how we respond. And one lady who was driving Jacqueline and I last week to the venue, she said something that was profound. She said, everything I ate upset me, so I made a diary. Mm. And I started real simple. And that is, that is profound. That, yeah, that's great. And she got to the point where she started to see what upset her gut and what didn't. And in... Exodus 15, 26, God says, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right in his sight. And it wasn't until I was speaking this one day to a group of natural therapists that it struck me. Listen to the voice of the Lord your God in your body. Mm. In mm. your body. Because God made the body and this is the voice and the voice says, please don't do that again. Yeah. And the voice says, please, I, I like that. Yeah. And that, that I think is how the bottom line is. Yeah. How does it sit with you? Yeah. See, bell pepper doesn't sit well with me. Mm. So you know what? I don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> now, why doesn't it sit well with me? Well, could be that my mother had rheumatoid arthritis and the bell pepper can ease that. I, I might have a few theories, but I don't know. Yeah, but you listen and to your I, body. I know that one day Jesus will come again and we'll all be healed and I can eat bell pepper again. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> until then. There we go. I listen. There we go. And that relates to what I try to keep in mind. I try to keep in mind, uh, I believe it's in First Timothy. Anyways, it's, it talks about test and prove all things and hold fast to that, first, which is good. First Thessalonians 5, that's 21. It. There we go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And that's... <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because that's one I use. And that's a challenge from God. Prove it. Exactly right. Yeah. And if it works, hold fast. Exactly right. Exactly right. And also related to that, how one of the things you also talked about in your present, one of your presentations is approaching health with a fear-based philosophy versus a faith-based philosophy. Do you care to touch on that too? I actually got this from my husband. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and he presents it at his political rallies. And the fear, and of course God has said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Let's analyze this. What's power? Knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And we can't make a decision unless we have the knowledge. 
love. God is a God of love and he gave us an amazing body. Sound mind. What does the sound mind do? It weighs up the pros and cons. So this fear system, and God's just said, I've not given you that one, but this fear system was based on a theory that we evolved. And because we evolved, we cannot heal. Mm -hmm. And because we cannot heal, a billion dollar industry was set up to create drugs. But the fact is they never heal. No, they don't. They might mask symptoms, but that doesn't mean. No. That's... It's like me driving along in my first car was a Fiat and had a little blue light if the oil went low. And that blue light is annoying, so I get a hammer and smash it. <laughs> oh, what a relief, there's no more blue light. Well, I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, but is it 20 miles down the road the car stops and it'll never go again? Yeah, so right. it's, it's actually, a get back to listen, now that pharmaceutical company was based, it is based on deception, not as it seems. So the other system is faith. And Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see, it's not faith. It's like when I broke my, my arm in December. It wasn't healed yet, but I had faith. Mm -hmm. that, and look, it did. It yeah. did. It healed. Yeah. <laughs> so this faith system is based on a fact. Notice, not a theory, but a fact. As the Bible says, we were created in the image of God. What an honor. And our body was created to heal. And if it needs a little help, like my arm did, I've got comfrey, herbs. Mm -hmm. And Psalm 104, verse 14, the Bible says, God gave herbs for the service of man. So they come in and they work with the body, whereas the drugs, they're like robots. Get out of my way. I've got a job to do whether you need it or not. What a difference. Now, this faith system was based on truth. So when I draw that on the board, it's it's actually black and white, Nelly. Yeah. It's as far as the east is from the west as those two systems. But in the next breath, I always say there are some excellent doctors. Yeah. And there are some not so good doctors. It's like there are good plumbers, not so good plumbers. And I'm so thankful for the skill of the orthopedic surgeon that pulled this bone back yeah. into place. And I am so thankful for the pain-killing medication yeah. that allowed the doctor to do that. <laughs> exactly right. So, so you see, there's a time and place. The problem is, that's the first time in my life, and I'm 71, that, that I've had that pain-killing medication and that an orthopedic surgeon has tended me. I've gone through 71 years. So my point is, the odd time in a crisis... Yes. But it sort of spilled out into my finger sore, um, my hand burnt. And I thought, what's the matter with society? We don't even know how to look after our bodies. No, 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 no. Slightest little fever, they're heading right to the emergency room or whatever else. So when I'm sitting in that emergency room for six hours, and thank God I didn't know it was going to be six hours. Do you know why it took so long? I'm in the most excruciating pain of my life. The whole system is chocked up with my finger sore. Yeah. My blood pressure's gone up. I feel sick. Have you drunk today? Oh, I need a few drinks of it. <laughs> and I'm, oh, man. And, and my husband went to them and said, my wife's in a lot of pain. She's been here a while. You know what they said to her? She's on the fast track. Well, I had to be on the slow wow, track. Wow, I know. Wow, six so hours. Wow. I sat there wow. and realizing why I do what I do. Yeah. And, and kind of with that, how would you encourage people to navigate that balance? And maybe even... Yeah, it's a good question. How do I navigate the balance? The, the look of my wrist was weird. Mm -hmm. The pain was excruciating. I knew I needed more than a poultice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I say to people, if you're at all not sure... Go and get an assessment mm -hmm. and then go home and it's like when my child had a fever for seven days and they said, oh, she's got a bronchitis, give her this antibiotic. Well, I go home and she's got bronchitis. Oh, I can give this herb, I can do this, mm -hmm. I can do that. But I had the script there, but I didn't ever need to do that script. So it's not that you don't ever go. You, you get an assessment. Mm -hmm. 
And if you think the doctor's suspecting you won't do anything and they have the right to make your child a ward of the state, you say, thank you so much for your advice. Yeah. Let me seriously consider this. Yeah. And that's our God-given right to do that. Sure. And you smile like an idiot. You don't go into dialogue or discussion because they don't know Comfrey. Yeah, no. They don't know Kay and Pepper. Yeah, yeah. And there, your child, God placed them in your responsibility, it's, your care. It's no your, one loves them like you do. <laughs> it's your God-given right. Yeah. Switching gears just slightly, what would you say are some of the most important lifestyle changes or things that people can do to, to greatly improve their health from a from a more natural standpoint? I don't know if you want to mention some of your not yeah, pillars yeah, of health. Yeah, or, I, I will, but the, before I do... Um, when I was doing my nutrition course 15 years ago, there was a question that said, talk on rhythm in the body. And I thought, talk on rhythm in the body? What's this? Yeah. But it was a fascinating question. Every, our body runs according to the, the heart beats, the way we walk, mm -hmm. and every body system. And that tells me the body loves routine. Mm. It doesn't like breakfast 6 o'clock one day, 10 o'clock the next, 8 o'clock the next, no breakfast the next day. Routine is vital. Mm. So it's getting some routine or order into your life and your body's very happy with it. And that's how I cope with being in a different place, sometimes different country every week. I keep to routine mm. and the sustain me principles, which is sunshine. I make sure I get that many days. Use of water, I keep well hydrated. In fact, my stomach's not allowed to have lunch unless it's drunk. <laughs> I have certain rules or guidelines, but I just do it because it works. Mm -hmm. I go to bed early every night. In fact, I try not to be asleep after 10. I start to aim for between 9 or 10 to get my 8 hours. I know my body recharges and revives in those hours. I trust in God. I surrender everything early every morning to God saying, Father, I am yours. Guide me and show me through this day. And that, that helps me not to stress, um, to just accept God's just given us one day and that is today. He's given us one moment and in a minute we'll get another moment. Yeah. I don't take anything into the body that will harm it. So I'm always investigating what's in this, what's in this. Ah, I'm not going to take that into my body. So many people are putting things into their body that they don't realize are harming, and yeah. that's where I educate on that. I breathe through my nose as much as possible. Challenge when you're a speaker. <laughs> when I turn around to the whiteboard, I go... <laughs> in and out through the nose. I get more oxygen at the cellular level. New nutrition you know we we need to be having nourishing food and i go out of my way to make sure that the food i have is the best nourishment moderation in all the good things i love olive oil but i don't have a cup a day <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit and exercise yeah. we were running up and down hills this morning and then we dived into that lake oh wow <laughs> Do you know these and um, I love my daughter and I brainstormed to get an acronym for it and we came up with sustain me and then we found a Bible verse at Psalm 55 22 cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. oh wow that's he good. will never suffer the righteous to be moved and then well what's righteous righteous is doing right mm -hmm. by your body and when you do right by your body you're doing right by God Wow! wow you, you mentioned in there prayer, and, and there's, there's been a lot of spiritual principles involved in that. When someone is approaching trying to get physical healing, how important would you say that mental, emotional, and spiritual health is, is to obtaining that physical healing? Do you know, it, it absolutely is. And where I'm speaking tonight and tomorrow, that's where, where I'll be targeting it's everything. It's like a lady that said to me, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. I said, don't say that again. Mm. Because I said, every cell in your body says, oh, it looks like we can't sleep. So your words, yes, they reveal your feelings and your thoughts, but they also affect your feelings and your thoughts. Yeah. And so just by choosing the words that we say has an effect on our mind. And 
Every heart has its sorrow, and it's not what has happened to us, it's what we do with it. So I, I certainly do have several lectures where I, ex I explore that. And also to know, Jesus came the first time. This is 2,024 years after Jesus came, you know, Jesus came. He rose from the dead and the Bible says he will come again. And when he comes again, we'll all experience total healing, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physical. But until then, God has given us some simple guidelines that we adhere to them, we will have spiritual, emotional, mental and physical management. We might not be totally cured, but, but we can manage. And if we, we can manage, we're doing very well. Everyone I know is managing something. Yes, that's right. That is right. Well, I am a homesteader, farmer. How, do you, how important do you feel like people who grow food are to helping to ensure health for others? Oh, I think it's of the utmost importance because if it's a healthy soil, it'll be a healthy plant. And if it's a healthy plant, the person that eats that plant, they, they, they will have all the nourishment that the cell needs, not only to function, maintain us, but also to help to heal. And I believe everyone who is interested in getting into natural healing, they need to start in the soil. <laughs> they, need to, yes. they need to know what the soil needs to grow a healthy plant. Yep. That, that is uh, vital. So I am very appreciative to the farmers who are growing the food that, that our body needs. And I know that, that uh, there are many foods that on the supermarket shelf that look pretty fancy, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're... I was with my daughter one day and the peaches looked good. And she was in uh, a big supermarket and she grabbed a peach and said, smell this. There was no smell. Mm. She put it back and said, Mum, we're going to the farmer's market. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and those peaches might be a little gnarly, uh, maybe have some some hail damage to it, yep. but all oh, the flavour. <laughs> yes, you're exactly right. I, I could be imagining this, but I, I feel like I can taste pesticides and things like that oh, on yeah. some of the produce. Sometimes oh, it yeah. tastes like soap to me when I'm oh, eating yeah. it. I'm like, oh, I can't eat that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got some... Uh, organic tomatoes the other day. Oh, the flavor. Mm -hmm. And I was reading that one organic tomato has nine times the iron wow. that a conventionally grown wow. tomato. So when you taste a food that tastes good like that, you're tasting minerals. And minerals literally glues us together and keeps our bones strong. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yes. Yeah, you also, um, I, I like how you talk about the Psalm 104, you mentioned it earlier about the herbs for the service of man, it also talks about grass for the cattle and there, just that God provides every living creature what they need. And one of, my, one of the things that I believe, I feel like every single thing that God created was for a purpose, has its purpose, has a function in this, in this world and has Even a Even the appendix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, you're right. Everything that God created has has a purpose and it's just knowing how to use it. And something that's been lost is common sense. Yes, <laughs> yes. Totally so agree with it's, you. It's having common sense. And I'm thankful for the books that people have written that tell us what the herbs do and their actives. So we can investigate that for ourselves. Are there any top herbs that you think would be handy for people to have on hand? I think every home should have cayenne pepper. Okay. Cayenne pepper will bring someone out of a heart attack. Cayenne pepper will uh, cease bleeding on a, on a cut. It's a, it's a great little first aid kit. Someone said to me, but doesn't it sting when you put it into a cut? I said, it's already stinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll notice when you take it by mouth, there's certainly a tingle, but then that eases and it's the same, it's the same with a cut. So I think, I think cane pepper is quite a universal um, herb. In fact, one article I was reading, they claim that you put cane pepper with any other herb and it'll intensify its action. Mm. So that's quite incredible. So yes, cane pepper. I think charcoal's important for for poisoning externally and internally. It absorbs and it neutralizes the poisons very quickly. They're even 
NASA use it to filter air and water in outer space. Uh, medicine uses it to filter blood for dialysis. So that's another, another important one. And they're probably universal. There certainly are some other herbs that are specific for certain things. I think the lavender essential oil is wonderful to help calm people and help them to sleep. I, you know, then there's the liver herbs and the bitter herbs to help with digestion. Yes. You speak of cayenne, we, we make tinctures out of the cayenne mm. pepper and I found it also helps with inflammation for me. Yeah. So that's neat. Would you recommend also comfrey as one of those things or a comfrey Com salve? Yes, comfrey salve is excellent. That's what, uh, in fact, I had a x-ray at four weeks. So this, this radius was totally broken and out of alignment. Oh wow. That's why it was just so painful. And at four weeks I had an x-ray. They just check because when they pulled it into place, the surgeon said, pretty good. Mm. That was enough for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want pins in place. <laughs> yeah. And when they looked at it four weeks, they were surprised that, that in a 70-year-old woman, that had healed so beautifully. And I'd like to think it's two things, that this 70-year-old woman, woman, she exercises, goes to bed early, drinks some water, eats nourishing food so mm -hmm. that the body works well, but also the comfrey. Mm -hmm. The comfrey has a growth stimulant in it and its nickname is Knit Bone because of its ability to stimulate rapid healing, yes, in bone, uh, ligament, tendon, tissue, skin. So I think uh, the salve, the comfrey salve, is an easy one for everyone to have in their home. So no matter what the problem is, they can apply that. We have a lot of injuries on the homestead, so that is oh, something yes. we're very familiar with. Oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so as we wrap up, what would you say is the lasting legacy that you want to leave with people? I really appreciate the work that you do. Uh, one of the things that we talked about when we were at your event is just like, it was a nice place to come where we weren't the weirdos because out there in the world, we're seen as the weirdos doing the natural things that really aren't really weird when you think about it. Really, uh, the other things that people are doing are really weird. It's like, it's <laughs> like choose your heart, you know? The, yes. the poor child that has to go and have their tonsils and their adenoids cut out, um, that's hard. Yes, it probably seems hard to not give the child the refined sugar and the dairy, but you know what, what's the hardest thing? And I say to people, before you have the tonsils out, stop the dairy, stop the wheat, stop the refined sugar, give the child natural food and give it two months and in two months the tonsil, tonsils have settled down, the adenoids have settled down. Yes. And one lady said, but can't you have a little sugar now and then because this food's so boring? I said, my food's not boring. Yes. <laughs> my food tastes amazing. Yes. And yes, I used to make dessert about twice a week for my children. You make an apple pie or a lemon pie and you use palm sugar or honey. You know, there's no need to give them that. And some people say, but my children won't eat that. I say, You'd be surprised what they eat when they're hungry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Always smile. Yes. You don't say you're not eating that. No, no, no. Do a cleanse of the kitchen cupboards, a cleanse of the freezer, a cleanse of the... And before you do that, mother and father, have a little meeting mm -hmm. and become united in what you're going to do with your children. That, you know, that, that, is, that is paramount. But I... I don't know whether we totally explored how do you work out what is right. Well, how do you work out what is right for this child? Eliminate those common allergens mm -hmm. and see what their tonsils do, but leave, give it a couple of months. You can have a slice of bread, it'll be out of your body in 24 hours, but the effect can remain for up to two months. So there is so much information out there. My book Sustain Me, I wrote with an aim that it be a handbook on natural remedies and not an encyclopedia this big. There's a place for the encyclopedias on natural remedies. I wanted a little handbook. So if they tread on a rusty nail, oh, we can do hot and cold and grated potato. Oh, if they have a bee sting, oh, we can do a charcoal poultice. And before I was banned, there were four doctors that would get me to go to their town, give these meetings. Wow because they knew that if the average person knew this, that would ease 
emergency. So the orthopaedic surgeon could see me within maybe two hours instead of six hours. Yeah, yeah. The whole system is so chopped up. And you yeah. talk to every doctor and every nurse, they roll their eyes, they say, we can't believe what people come in for. Yes, yeah. But in the next breath, you don't want to stop if someone's really concerned. You go and have it checked out. Yeah. And ah, oh, you know, don't say to the doctor, oh, I know a natural remedy for this that gets them a little scared. Yeah. You say, thank you so much for your advice. I'm going to seriously consider this. And maybe you've got the script there, but try the natural way. Give it a little bit of time. As long as there's relief, very soon, that's the body saying we can do this. I think that's really important. You mentioned that, <clears throat> I want to say that you're, speaking in terms of reoccurring issues that a child's have like with their tonsils yeah. and sore throat or even as an adult if you're having reoccurring yeah. issues maybe start eliminating things to figure out why something's happening so i think it's really important right. sir isaac newton's third law of motion to every action there's an equal and an opposite reaction exactly there is right. always a cause and in case of sickness my one of my favorite books the ministry of healing she says in case of sickness ascertain the cause number one why what why is this happening because if you don't find the cause you actually don't have a cure exactly right and any of the books barbara's books as well as the ones that she's mentioned will include in the links below but barbara is there any last things that you want to share with the audience that you want to leave them with yes I would like to encourage everyone to have faith in this incredible body Weird. that has an inbuilt ability to heal itself and to thank God every day that you have this body that it can heal. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18 it says, in everything give thanks. So when I break my arm, I'm very thankful it wasn't my right arm. <laughs> There's always something that you can be thankful for. But I think it's time to go on to 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things. Prove it. Yes. Try it. Try the diet change. Try going to bed a bit earlier. Try drinking more water. And prove for yourself what this can do. Because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> we are. We are. Yes. And maybe also not look for the pill to fix everything. That Maybe it's going to require some effort. Well, the pill might mask the symptom, but it will not heal. Yes. It will not heal you. Yes. Now, how can my audience find out more about you? Your website, social media? Yeah, it's very, very easy. It's barbaraoneal.com. There we go. <laughs> and on there, they can find your books. And on Facebook, it's Real Barbara O'Neill. Real Barbara O'Neill. Not the or the A. Okay. And there are many fake sites. Yes. So Real Barbara O'Neill and... Another website is selfhealedbydesign.com. Well, thank you so very much for chatting with me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it truly was a pleasure meeting and chatting with Mrs. Barbara O'Neill. She really is a neat lady. Check out the show notes below. I've provided a number of links for Barbara where you can check her out and learn more. Oh, but don't forget, at the beginning of this video, I did mention that I'll be giving away some items that Barbara gave me. Well, she gave me a number of book sets to give away of hers sustain me which is really good has really basic principles for health for everyone to keep in mind self heal by design and the book that goes into greater detail about why she was banned oh and some more things also have wild yam cream for women and for men Yam cream, if you don't know, it helps balance out hormones and a number of other things. So I'll be giving these items away. And how do you enter for the giveaway? Well, all you have to do is look again in the show notes below, sign up to be on my email list, and I'm going to be picking a number of random winners, picking your email to receive some of these items.